Adventure Guys, the podcast for humans and dogs. I'm Eric the Human. And I'm Nick the Human. And uh, this is episode 13. Yeah, lucky. Oh, we're, we're actually going to call it 13? We're not going to skip it? Like, you know, in fancy elevators, you just skip 13 and you just go right to 14? Yo, you know I'm not fancy. Oh, no. <laughs> we're, we're cursing ourselves. There should be no 13th episode. Should we call it episode 666 instead? Oh, no. Recording it on Friday. <laughs> uh, uh, and it's October. Uh, uh, this feels... Dude, this October has been going great for me. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you finished, Maybe... a, you finished a big recording project. You just watched Steven Universe. Totally finished uh, Steven Universe full watch through in under two weeks, I think. I commend you. That's a good rage binge if I ever heard of it. Yeah, I think I'm going to start OKKO OK again tonight. I don't know about that show. What is that show? The show that was created by Rebecca Sugar's partner, Ian Jones Cordy. Cool. And it uh, he also worked on Adventure Time, I think, here and there for some things. I'm not exactly sure what role he had, but I think he was involved somehow. Sweet. All right. Well, I'll check it out. Let me yeah, know. It's a, it's a fun show. It's definitely lower stakes than... Adventure Time or Steven Universe. Nice. It's fun. Sweet. What's the episode we're talking about today? It's uh, Season 2, Episode 14. What's it called again? The Silent King. The Silent King. Interesting name for this episode. Yeah. You don't really know what it means until the very end. Yeah. I actually don't know what it means still. You're going to have to explain it to me once we get to the end. Oh. It's not, it's not, not anything that special, really. <laughs> I might have just zoned out. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting, though. Um, I've been mentioning Sean Harvey, frequent friend of the pod, has been watching it, uh, Adventure Time, like, mad. So, in between, like, meetings at work and, like, breakfast, I've been watching the show. And I watched a ton this week. I'm really starting to get involved. I Now I really just want to, as we're doing the pod, on my own time, just watch the entirety of adventure time because i love this show i know that it's funny to say that and everyone anyone (laughs) listening to this will probably but it is so good we're in he's in season seven right now and watching like oh he's all the way up there yeah and i watch like a bunch of the marceline uh like series and the like christmas special with bemo and it was it's just so good so it's funny though to watch some of those episodes and we've been getting further and further along with our uh, episodes but then to go back to season two and the animation style is a little bit different. Um, you know, this this one is a purely fun episode. There's no lasting plot in it at all, really. Yeah. Uh, so I got the Art of Ooh book on Adventure Time. Oh, nice. I, I had ordered it a little while ago. Uh, it was surprisingly hard to find. Um, I mean, I'm not like going out shopping in person very much these days. Sure. Uh, so I ordered it. It had to come from the UK, so it took a Ooh. while to get here. Uh, um, but I finally be- started reading it a few days ago, and uh, they talk about, the like, I've only gotten through the first chapter or so, and talking about the early days of, like, pitching the show and getting everything formed correctly and, and finding the style of the show and, the, like, the art direction. And they're talking a little bit how, you know, it started to solidify and become a little bit more defined as they went along. Uh, but it, it's really cool uh, hearing about how they built this up from nothing. Oh, I really want to get that book. So you, you couldn't find it on Amazon or something? You had to like... Uh, I I did. I hate ordering from Amazon. Yeah, I know. That's, I know. that's where I, I did find it. Yeah. But it was from the UK. It was like Amazon UK huh. is where the only place I could get it. So it was maybe like a limited run, this book or something? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I think it was published in 2014 or 2015. So it's, you know, it's been out for a while. I don't know if they, that was before the multiple pressings before the end of the show. Yeah. So I think it's only like about halfway point. Um, I would love to see them do another book. So the, the analogous book of Steven universe, uh, art and origins, uh, came out a few years ago and it's, it talks about Steven universe up through season four. Uh-huh. And just a couple days ago, they released a second volume Ooh, that cool. covers seasons five, the movie, and season six, Steven Universe Future. So that's on its way, too. I ordered that, uh, and I can't wait to read through that one. But I, I love hearing about like the creative process, and it, especially like seeing the early drawings from Pendleton Ward 
and seeing the other drawings of, of the other artists on the show, the other people on the, on the crew, like trying to figure out Penn's style. Oh, wow. They're like, hey, he, he draws Finn this way. What does that mean? And then Penn would be like, oh, it doesn't mean anything. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but then the other guys are like, no, no, we have to worry about it. <laughs> We're yeah. going to have to draw these characters all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cool. I want to get this book, too. I might order it. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a good one. I forget where I'm at. They started doing some interviews with some of the voice actors. I heard, read one with Jeremy Shada, who does Finn. Mm-hmm. Oh, great. Well, maybe, well, I want to do an episode on all that one day. Like, that could be fun. Um, but as it is, we're in season two, episode 14, and the drawing style is a little weird, but still a fun episode. Like, a great classic Adventure Time episode. They land in this weird little world. I don't even know. So... When it starts, oh, let's discuss the episode. Play the theme, please. Episode discussion. Right, so the episode starts, and Finn and Jake, so they're out just in U, and then they come upon this this uh, this green guy being mean to a bunch of small people. Well, I guess they kind of skip any exposition. Yeah. It, that's I guess we're seeing it uh, sort of a classic Adventure Time setup. Yeah, where we're just in we're, the action. We don't know how long they've been battling oh, right, right, this yeah. guy, but we we meet Finn and Jake mid battle. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, <laughs> and he just seems really mean, and they defeat him, and they become heroes to all the small people that this guy was being mean to. And they hoist they hoist Finn and Jake up. They bring him up into the castle. They start chanting Finn and Jake, and and they're like, ah, yeah, thanks. And um, there's all the people of this like village town are sort of like, hey, we need a king. Like, would you be the king? Would you be the nice king? And you know, Finn's like, no, nah, we're not up for that. And then they kind of start quickly de-evolving and <laughs> devolving. And there's an old man who goes, well, without a king, how will I know not to riot? <laughs> And all of a sudden, that's like a... It <laughs> Sounds starts... like a Trump supporter 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Same age bracket and everything. <laughs> and they just start dev- they just start riding because there's no one there to tell them not to. And uh, Finn's finally like, God damn, okay, I'll be the king. And they... So, so is this kind of episode... Is this a, a trope of television like, wh- like where... St- some hero becomes the reluctant king of a new community, uh, the new ruler of a new kingdom. Huh. It is, but I, I can't nail the, like where I've seen this before. So there, there's one particular episode of Futurama that it reminded me of. I don't know if it's just because that episode of Futurama came out like over 20 years ago uh, that wow. I think it's God damn, a, a more universal trope of television i don't know i i i've never seen that episode of futurama and i know this plot line in my bones like right. i've it, seen this i have an instinct that it we we've seen this in our culture in 20, yeah like it seems like it could be a star trek plot sure like a original series star trek episode definitely um but yeah the episode of futurama was a uh, kind of a classic season one uh episode i think it was called my three sons where Fry is on a planet and the people that live there, the aliens are all liquid based <laughs> and he's really thirsty and he just drinks by accident, the King. And then he has Classic to, Fry. yeah. And then he has to learn all of their rules and customs to be the, the King of, of this, of, of this new world or else they'll execute him if he doesn't, you know, follow the rules exactly right, which is very similar to this episode of Adventure Time, and it's funny because John DiMaggio plays the same role in each of these episodes. <laughs> Bender in that future yeah. episode is Fry's prime minister, and he doesn't care about any of the weird shit that these aliens are doing. But he's just enjoying the benefits of being a high-ranking government official, and that's exactly oh my what God, Jake is doing. That is what Jake's queen. doing. <laughs> he's we get a, we get a great shot of Jake in it sensory deprivation tank in this episode <laughs> he's living it up he's living it up people are chewing food for him he's using a lion as a blanket <laughs> yeah it's great um 
Anyway, these people, it's now Finn and Jake are going to, uh, okay, Finn's going to be the, the king, Jake's going to be the queen, and they show him around the kingdom, and it starts to look pretty sweet. Like, they come, right? Like, they start, they start seeing the amenities, and Finn's eyes are getting all big, like, hey, it's going to be pretty cool being king. I get to do all these things. And as they're getting ready to go to bed, um, what what's the guy's name? Is it G- Goo Gummy? Gummy, yeah, yeah. He said, like, yeah. he's like, can I read to you the rules? And they're like, sure. And then they immediately just fall asleep. <laughs> um, and they wake up the next day, and it starts getting weird. Now, before this happens, the day before, we see a flashback to what was the what's the old king's name? G- Gilgamesh. <laughs> Zergiak. Zergiak. Oh, wow. My bad. Gilgamesh. <laughs> Zergiak um, is going around and just slapping everyone's butts. He's just spanking everybody. Yeah, that's how. He, that's his form of tyranny. Yeah, is he's just <laughs> spanking everyone, which is weird. That's not exactly my sense of humor. <laughs> you know, there's some things in, in early Adventure Time where I'm like, this isn't my humor, but it is sort of funny. Um, it's weird. Um, it's not sexual. Don't worry. <laughs> no. Um, and <laughs> and anyway, so we, we've seen that and it's like, oh, this guy sucks. Next day, Finn's going to brush his teeth and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. We have to brush your teeth for you. Like, didn't remember rule one? Like the king can't brush his own teeth. You're like, I'm going to brush my teeth. And then they assume that they are now going to be spanked by the king. And it's clear because that's the rules. So it's clear that the rule yeah, it, it doesn't matter who breaks the rules if it's the king who breaks the rules it's still the subjects that get punished it's still the subject <laughs> yes exactly and right there now in our heads you start there starts to, like a mystery sort of evolve which is was it really this terrible guy who was being a jerk in the way that he was ruling these people or are these people who immediately were devolving into rioting with no king for less than three minutes do these people have this rule for to governing them because this is the way that this type of person needs to be governed you know i don't know like i or did that guy write the rule i was curious i was like i don't know if that guy was so bad like maybe this is just what the book says you have to do and he's the king i don't know and i was also like did that guy write the rules but on a second viewing it's clear when the guy reads the rules that the old king did not write them. These are long standing rules. So I was kind of like, huh, what's going on here? And and this, this keeps going. They chew their food. Um, they want to chew their own food and cut their own food. It's against the rules. Of course, they have to do that for themselves. Um, and then eventually like there's an old woman who's getting her bread stolen. Finn tries to save her and, and it devolves into madness. Uh, it's, it's, it's really bad. But then eventually the old King's coming back and it becomes clear that even though these rules are longstanding, this guy is still a bad guy. I had a pretty sinister interpretation of this. Okay. Where I thought it was pretty clear that all these these goblin subjects, they have some pretty bad PTSD. <laughs> like, okay. this king was a real shit show and was abusive towards all these people. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm totally with that. And it, it was clear because they were like, this is ingrained behavior. And they were sort of like, this is what a king does. Like, please hit me. Yeah. I have been bad. Maybe he made them think that if he wasn't there to spank them all the time, that they would devolve into riots. You're right. I Maybe guess what, that's not their natural inclination. And I'm with you in there. What threw me were these was this book of rules that seemed to imply that if you broke the rules, you would be spanked. Maybe it was just if you broke the rules, you would be punished. That seemed to have been written like a millennia ago. But maybe you're right. Maybe actually, I think I agree with your interpretation that sure there was a book of rules. This is what you weren't supposed to do. But this evil, abusive king manipulated that and took advantage of it so that he could, you know, abuse and bend these people. We never really saw the rule that says if anything is broken, the punishment shall be spanking. No, <laughs> merciless spanking. Or if or if you don't brush your teeth, like if we don't brush your teeth for you, you will be spanked. That can't yeah. be a rule. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty bad scene. But luckily, also, those were the rules just for the king. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
Those weren't like that wasn't like the Goblin Constitution. Yeah, I guess it seemed to be it was being interpreted that way. I guess you're right is that this guy really could have just laid it all out in a way that <laughs> took advantage of these people. I was really giving him way too much leeway there. Yeah, I mean, I'm no poli sci major, but it seems like a kind of fucked up form of government to begin with and then throw a tyrannical despot into the mix. Uh, not a recipe for success. No. Kaboom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's pretty sad when they show the examples of him being a terrible tyrant it's funny too because it's like at first yeah he's like spanking people and then there's a beautiful sunset and then he goes and spanks people someone proposes to his girlfriend he kicks the ring out and spanks both of them <laughs> right that's like that's like the kids show version of enacting prima nocta what's prima nocta that's like the the old timey rule where a king has the right to take a newlywed. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what yeah. I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that's funny. Um, but luckily, this guy comes back. So they kick him out. Finn and Jim, he's gone. He's coming back now with this new army he's assembled. And the army consists of very tall, very strong men, maybe giants even, except their heads are one ear. Ear clops. Ear clops. <laughs> big, hairy, muscly, very scary, but they're just one big ear. Um, and it takes... Finn and Jake don't even have to verbally discuss it to know exactly what they're going to do. Finn, oh, there's a game plan in place for ear clops. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like, okay, we know how to handle this. Finn gets inside Jake for a Jake suit uh, situation. Jake suit. Jake suit, back again. But except that this time, they, they're using it for, for good. Uh, I think this is the original appearance of the Jake suit. Oh, nice, yeah. And they use it to great effect as they go forth and immediately just do the biggest self-high fives of all time to just knock out ear clops. All of them, <laughs> all 20 or whatever. Self high five. I didn't. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I guess a clap. I guess that's what a clap is. <laughs> I think that's a a move that the Incredible Hulk has. Mm. A thunder clap. Mm hmm. <laughs> I think it is. Um, <laughs> and, and then what's great too is is uh, so then they start fighting. Zelgames. What's his name again? Zergiok. Zergiok. They start to fight. With an X. Oh, nice. They start to fight Zergiok. And he's like, he's tricky. He can like teleport and all this stuff. But they defeat, they, they knock him out. They like deflect the fire he's shooting back at him. And his wand, that's magic, falls on the ground. And then Finn picks it up and eats it. He just. <laughs> My favorite part well, of the episode. Because <laughs> earlier on, Finn, when they defeated him in the beginning of the episode, Finn. W like was teasing him about using a wand instead of a sword. Yeah. I forget what he said exactly. But then he's in the Jake suit and Finn just like Finn is the one who eats it. It's yeah. not Jake. It's, no. There's no magic involved. Finn just eats, chews up and swallows a magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good. It's good. <laughs> and then how does it end? What happens after that? Finn is in the Jake suit as a disguise because the king would not be allowed to enter battle oh uh, right so he needs needs to win the battle without the goblins realizing that it's the king doing so uh so in that disguise he sets up whisper dan to be the proxy king he uh puts a box over his head to have like finn's little smiley face on it to trick the goblin subjects into whisper dan really being the king <laughs> And Whisper Dan is just like a servant, like some like stone person that like just does the bidding of the court, I guess. And he doesn't speak at all. He's totally mute. Doesn't even have a mouth. So he is the silent king of the episode title. Nice. I got very distracted for that last little part. I don't even know if I saw <laughs> That's kind of the perfect king for these people, right? He's not going to be breaking lots of rules. Yeah. They seem to be able to manage on their own, the main friction seemed to be because they had to tend to the needs of the king and wh whoever the king happened to be, whether he was a tyrant or, or benevolent, 
whatever the king wanted wasn't good. Yeah. God bless Finn. He was trying, you know. Yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah, just put Whisper Dan on the throne. He doesn't require anything, I guess. He just sits there silently, and the goblins can just hang out and do whatever they want to do. Yeah. Happy ending. Happy ending. <laughs> Good app. I liked that. I liked this one. It was it was a fun full circle. They got out of there. Every all the good guys won. Um, but I'll tell you what. As I was watching this, I was really, really looking for somebody. Uh, it, yeah. Yeah. It was a snail. <laughs> oh, that was wrong. So, Nick, did you see the snail? No. I didn't see it. Oh. Eric, did you see the snail? Yep. What? I'm on a streak, dude. Where was this snail? I actually <laughs> looked for it this time. I wasn't looking for it. Oh. I just... Rubbing it in. Yeah. I don't... Well, I, I think it's... My brain is conditioned to see the snail. Yeah. Uh as he appears in his normal form. So he was, I think it was like to scale actually like a little bit bigger than previous appearances on okay. this one too. He was in a busy shot. What What was the shot? Where was it? Uh, it was when the thief was being like, give me your hot buns. Oh, right. <laughs> and uh, the snail was standing behind him. I, st- I behind yeah. Him. Damn it. I'm going to see this goddamn thing. I, again, I, God, I swear it. All right. Well, congratulations, Eric. Uh, here's my song for you. One second. One second. I'm sorry. Congratulations. All right, back for another round next week. Rawr. Well, uh, how about some miscellaneous mania? Let's do it. Do you got any miscellaneous mania for us queued up? Uh, just one little bit of trivia. There is a Phil face in this episode. Oh, really? I missed that. Where was it? Uh, I didn't see it. Uh, I looked up some trivia, and then on my second watch through, I did see it. But it's it's in uh, the goblin crowd towards the end of the episode. Uh, one oh. of the goblins has a Phil face. Ah, oh, that's some good trivia. That the Phil face is. So crazy. So this episode was storyboarded by Jesse Moynihan. Oh, nice. And Cole Sanchez. And uh, it features a little Finn song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you have any and details on who did the Finn song? Uh, Jesse Moynihan wrote that. Cool. And it's, you know, one of the non-autotune Finn songs. Have you seen any of the autotune Finn songs? Yeah, I've seen some of those. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a funny little gimmick, I guess, that when Finn sings, he's just suddenly in auto tune. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. Yeah, but this one was not. And actually, uh, you know, from reading that book, uh, The Art of Ooh, and getting a little interview about Jeremy Shada voicing Finn, uh, he talked about singing uh, some of the songs. It's because, you know, when they have auto-tune songs, it's not, like, super difficult. You just have to... It's actually kind of better and funnier if you're bad at it. Yeah. But he talked about how it was kind of difficult singing as Finn. So, uh, so here's the thing. I'm not really sure... And it's 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 definitely left a little ambiguous, but I'm not sure how diegetic this music is supposed to be. Like, when you see these characters singing songs, like, how aware of it are the other characters around them it's sort of like that musical theater yeah. question 
Yeah. Um, but Jeremy Shada said that, you know, it's supposed to sound a little bit raw because when Finn sings these songs, he's singing directly from the heart and he's supposed to be making up these words as he goes along. Like it's supposed to be a totally unrehearsed, like just off the top of his head kind of thing. Yeah. So it's supposed to sound a little bit raw, rough around the edges, a little out of tune. Kind of how we write the songs for our podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But that that was, that was an interesting sentiment uh, because it is, but you, 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 that comes across like in, even in the theme and the, uh, and the end credits songs feel that way. Yeah, because aside from when the auto tune is used as an obvious effect, uh, it's it's very interesting that in this show and also in Steven Universe, like they never auto tune, uh, like someone actually just singing. Like they let things be just slightly sharp or slightly flat. Slightly fat, and and the way that they choose to record, like the way that the Adventure Time theme is recorded, is not super high def. Like, no, you know what I mean. Like the the the, the vocal. The main vocal on the song, there you can hear like room reverb on it. That's not necessarily the prettiest reverb you might choose if you you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's like it's a little bit janky, but it adds so much character. That's that's where some of the magic is, and I love that they embrace that in this show. That's cool that Jesse wrote the song, um, and that's it's so fun. To, also, I'm I've, I want to read this book too because you just wonder, like in the process of the show, like imagine you're working on a show and, and you're an animator, but you were also like wrote songs and stuff. You'd be like, Hey, let me take a crack at writing this song. You know what I mean? Like it's, uh, it's really cool. Like, yeah, well that's, that's okay. So this generation of millennial creators are like super Renaissance people. And it's just, it seems that way is, is what we have to do now. You know, it's like, (laughs) These these people got such an opportunity to produce this cartoon yeah. on a television station, right? And they are giving it their all, like every step of the way, like trying to learn to do new things. And uh, like everyone is involved in like every part of the process. Like, you know, you have like a job title, but like they're working on multiple episodes at the same time, uh, helping out other people with other tasks. Uh, you can't You can't be... This is just the way the economy works for us now is you can't be like just an expert at one thing anymore. It's not enough. <laughs> well, I think that's that's true, but the reason I think that it works in Adventure Time is because they embrace sort of what you were talking about in the in the Finn singing where it's from the heart. It's a little bit janky. Is because what they're embracing is the feeling of unbridled creativity in all of its forms, in its drawing, in its storytelling, in its music. And it's not about, oh, we need a song in Adventure Time. Let's go find the perfect songwriter. Let's go find like a really good songwriter that writes for all the other cartoons. It's like, no, we need the person who's telling the story to write the song because they're the story. You know what I mean? It's like... Yes. It's and they they capture that charm. It's like a DIY charm. It's like the the cobbled together charm. Like they're channeling all those things. So I I almost think it's like it's not even about the fact. I mean, look, there are Renaissance men and women who are running this show who have lots of different creative creativity just coursing through them. But like they're also not perfect musicians. You know, it's not like Rebecca Sugar is like this went to music school and is this crazy prolific uh, songwriter. It's more just like a creative soul channeling their creativity through music. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that I uh, was reading in the book, I forget who the interview was with. It might've been the head of the production studio that pitched it to Cartoon Network. Uh, his name is Fred something, the guy who runs Frederator. Oh, cool. Um, but you know, Pendleton Ward was in charge of running everything. And, but then there were like the studio guys who were like, had the money. Right. And the studio guys were like, okay, Penn, just hire, hire your team. And he kept bringing people in that were like super creative, but also super inexperienced. Yeah. So, so they just had this like group of like hyper artistic people that had no idea how to make a television show. 
<laughs> and so the network guys were like, okay, this is like a really good group of folks here, but <laughs> where's the expert? Where's the guy who's like, I've done this before. This is how you, 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 yeah. you st- <laughs> so they, they, they had to bring on like the network brought, uh, some heavy hitters. I think the showrunner from SpongeBob, uh, helped them get ready for their launch. They just like brought in some more experienced older guys to just put together the TV production aspect of everything. But it was initially just a room full of super creative artists. And they're just like, we're going to just make this awesome thing. It's cool. I mean, but that, but that, that's what we're getting at is that it's not about, I don't know. I guess I, I'm just like reticent to go along with the fact that all creators nowadays have to be these like Renaissance men because it's like the Renaissance men in that they are unbridled creative creative spirits that are channeling that childlike like wonder and let's go with it and make the best thing. That's really cool. But they, but they, but they may not have had the like grizzled veteran success of bringing it to the screen or something, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'm making sense right now. Um, uh, well, I mean, you know, in the music world too, like the really big DIY guys, they, you know, Jeff Rosenstock just designed all his album covers. I know we've talked about that. Yeah. how useful it was to have an education in graphic design mm-hmm. as a musician. <laughs> yeah. And it's, I mean, you listen to uh, like all throughout time, like music like that, like neutral milk hotel. That's really great. And it's not like, it's not like Jeff Mangum was like, I'm going to like go into now with like the big producer that's producing all the big indie hits of today. Like, he went in with like they recorded the album with his buddy and his all of his friends and they made that classic album together, you know, and it feels it feels handmade in a special way. Um, And the artwork is very cool. And yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not taking away the creativity of anybody involved in Adventure Time. If anything, I think it's just it's just cool. It's that's super. I can't I gotta get this book. That's what this is coming down to. I'm really yeah, excited to read great. about it, too. Um. Yeah, that spirit that you're talking about of just getting a bunch of really cool creative people in one room, it comes across on the show. Yeah, I mean, you can tell in later seasons things definitely uh, get more focused and streamlined, but not in a way where it was like, okay, your show is too out there. The network has to step in and make it more mainstream. It happened in a way where like the people that created it, the people that were there for its inception just got really good at what they were doing. Oh yeah. And if anyway, it gets crazier. Yeah. <laughs> like the idea of making a 283 episodes is that what it is like yeah. show that is going to have this running arc is pretty wild. I wonder if that's ever even, you know, been done on other kids parentheses cartoon. I don't know, but I can, yeah, what other, I don't think there are any other shows that have, 10 seasons or more, right? I mean, I mean, you mentioned SpongeBob before. That's got to have 10 seasons. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think they have got like 20 something. I don't know. Yeah. There there I think there's a bunch that have 10 plus seasons. Honestly. But in terms of but a lot of them don't follow the like the running sort of plot. Yeah, and and and, not... and in the way that Adventure Time does. Like th- there will be running plot and things that you know, you remember and you learn about the characters, but like, you know, just watching an episode in the seventh season where it's like Finn's in a battle and he uses his left hand as like, you know, to, to, to great effect. And it's like, we haven't seen that in like seasons and now it's just, he's just using it. You know what I mean? Like where it's like that your built in knowledge of the show comes into play later in a way that's not going to be explained. Yeah. I guess, I guess the, uh, the thing about adventure time is that, the huge quantity of episodes is something they accomplish without really falling into a formula. Yeah. We're like a show like SpongeBob has a formula. Yeah. But adventure time. I mean, there are themes, but there's never like, here's this kind of episode. That's interesting. And, and here are the, the beats that that kind of episode has to follow. I'm interested, you know, I'm, I wonder if they talk about that in the book, if that was like a, you know, kind of like a something they were shooting for. Like, hey, we're not going to repeat ourselves. We're going to keep going. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. Maybe I'll find out. Yeah. I do know that we're going to have to watch another episode for our next podcast episode. 
That's how it works. What are we gonna watch next week? What are we gonna watch? All right, so we're not actually going to use the generator for next week's app, <laughs> right? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a Halloween episode. Yeah, it's time. Okay, okay. let's do it. So, so for next week, we'll watch episode sixty four, which is season three, episode twelve, "The Creeps." The Creeps. All right, I'm excited for the episode. Yeah, it's gonna be a spooky one. Spooky. Ooh, scary. <laughs> Cool. Well, uh, we'll talk to all you guys later. Um, send us an email at did you see the mail uh, at gmail.com. If you got anything to say to us, we'd love to hear from you and do a little bit of talking. Uh, yeah. And you can always support us on our anchor page, uh, anchor.com slash adventure guys podcasts. And f- actually, yeah. actually, uh, anchor.com doesn't get you anywhere. It's anchor.fm. Oh God. What am I talking about here? Anchor.fm slash adventure guys podcast. Hey, like, subscribe, rate us, and then always tell one friend. Just make sure you tell that friend to go to anchor.fm, not dot com. You're gonna get some anchor manufacturer. <laughs> All right, good app. Great app. Peace out, y'all.